Hello guys, welcome back to our channel and welcome to the third part of the IMCI video series that we are doing. For today's video, we are going to discuss one of the conditions that can be managed under your IMCI protocol. But I do advise you to watch the first two part of the video series, which is the IMCI introduction and the appropriate antibiotic in order for you to relate on the discussions that we will be having with this video. Okay, I'll be putting up the link on our description box for you to access it and don't forget to watch it before you watch the succeeding videos that we will be uploading. So for pneumonia, uh, pneumonia is basically an infection of the lungs and it's common to children and sometimes it even causes death among children. It can also cause death in our older adults but uh, for children and adults they have different causative agent and pneumonia is one of the preventable disease okay, that can be prevented by uh, uh, giving vaccines to children and one of one of the most common cause of pneumonia to children or infants is your Haemophilus influenzae but can be prevented using your pentavalent vaccine or the 5-in-1 vaccine. So as I mentioned, pneumonia is a condition which is there is an infection in the lower respiratory tract. Okay, and the assessment now based on the IMCI protocol, the first thing to do is to identify if the condition or if the visit is an initial or a follow-up visit because it differs the treatment differs from okay those situations if it's an initial or a follow-up visit the second thing to do is to identify the child's weight and age because this is necessary to compute for the dosage okay of the medications to be given to them then after that we are going to assess for the danger sign for the danger sign this is your cova Convulsing now or convulsion, presence of convulsion within three days sa kanilang bahay or at the moment ng Luisita sa clinic. Unable to breastfeed, drinks or eat. Uh, v vomits everything and A abnormally sleepy or the, if the child is lethargic or difficult to awaken. So any of this condition would make the classification under pink classification which is your severe classification. The next thing to do is to check for the main symptoms. For the main symptoms, guys, we have your cough and colds and your difficulty of breathing plus your diarrhea. We have your fever and we have your ear problem. Take note, guys, that in actual setting, we have to class, we have to assess first the danger signs, the main symptoms, and the specific symptoms in each main symptoms before we classify a condition. Okay, then after that, main symptoms, we will now focusing on the cough and colds as part of this video or the difficulty of breathing. If the child presents this manifestation, we have to check for the following. Check for fast breathing by counting their breaths in one full minute. Chest for the check for the presence of chest and drawing. Listen for stridor and listen for the, for the presence of wheezing. So what are the differences on how to assess or how to assess these manifestations? First is counting the breath. So we already know how to count the breath one full minute. It's basically a combination of the expiration, inspiration, inspiration, one XP and one INSP is equivalent to one breath breathing cycle. So here we have to check first the age group. The three age group is the zero to two months, two months, 12 months, and 12 months to five years old. The higher, the, uh, the lower the age, the higher, okay, the rest, the normal respiratory rate. For the 0 to 2 is less than 60. Above 60 breaths per minute is considered as fast breathing. 2 to 12 months, above 50 is a fast breathing. Below 50 is normal respiratory rate. And 12 months to 5 years old is less than 40, normal breathing po yan. And above 40 is um, uh, fast breathing. Again, the age group is 0 to 2 months, 2 months to 12 months, and 12 months to 5 years old, normal breathing pattern is less than 60, less than 50, and less than 40, uh, respectively. Above those uh, uh, breaths per minute is considered as fast breathing. The next one is the, for the presence of chest and drawing. Chest and drawing is the inward movement of the lower chest wall when the child breathes in, and it's easily sign, it, it, it is a sign of respiratory distress. So it does not refer to the inward movement of the soft tissue between the ribs. Another one, okay, this is uh, what pictures look like for a patient with chest and drawing. This is actually a video, but I cannot play it. Okay, yeah. 
So next is to check for the presence of stridor. So the, tri the stridor is actually a harsh sound commonly hear when the child breathes in. So harsh sound. Okay, in Ilocano, we call it a grunt. Okay, but harsh sound. Okay, so parang, no, you, you know what stridor, what a harsh sound means. Okay, you can actually, even without stethoscope, you can actually hear what stridor is. Okay, the next one is for the presence of whizzing. So whizzing, unlike your stridor, is a high-pitched whistling sound, para siyang pito, okay, made while breathing in, uh, breathing, okay, can either be observed either during expiration or inspiration, but commonly seen during inspi, I mean expiration. It's a common sign for patient with acute asthma attack or patient with bronchoconstriction. Okay, so this is basically an inflammation and narrowing of the airway in endolocation from your throat into your lungs. Okay, now, now before classifying the condition, we have to take note of this, okay? Because a wheezing sound is a common sign of asthma, okay? That's why we need to do give first your rapid bronchodilator, which is your salbutamol, Okay, sa ibang cases, pero sila magbigay ng Ventolin. Pero in here, salbutamol tayo sa ating, uh, sa ating health center. And you have to give it 3 times with 15 to 20 minutes interval. Okay, while doing this, you also need to assess for the pulse rate kasi pwedeng maapektuhan. Then you have to classify the condition after... Um, I mean, you have to recount the breaths and chest for, check for chest and drawing before classifying the conditions. So what are the classification? We have three. We have your severe pneumonia or very severe disease, followed by pneumonia, and followed by your cough and colds. Now, for the severe pneumonia, what are the assessments that we need to check, check in order to classify the condition as pneumo severe pneumonia or very severe disease? All you only need to check for the presence of danger sign and or stridor. Again, at least one of these manifestations, at least one of the danger sign or a combination of them, or kung walang danger sign, basta may stridor, if a stridor is present, it is considered already as severe pneumonia. Therefore, you classify the condition as pink. What is the treatment? Give appropriate antibiotic. So give the first dose of appropriate antibiotic and refer the child urgently. For more discussions about this first dose of appropriate antibiotic, please do access the appropriate antibiotic discussion in our description box. Nandun po yung appropriate antibiotic na dapat ibigay natin, which is a combination drug of ampicillin plus gentamicin. Pag walang ampicillin, it's penicillin plus gentamicin. For further discussion, please do access the video. Then after that, okay, we classify the pneumonia naman. Okay, sir, walang danger sign, walang stridor. Ano meron? Chest in drawing or fast breathing. Classify the condition as pneumonia. So, kailangan ba dalawa, sir? No. At least one of this, chest and drawing or fast breathing, either ang meron sa kanila or parehas na meron, you will classify the condition as pneumonia. Okay? Pneumonia. Sir, paano pag may stridor with chest and drawing and fast breathing? Severe pneumonia na po yan. Okay? Or any presence of the danger sign. Now, these are the treatment that we're going to use or do if the child has pneumonia. So specifically, ang antibiotic na ibibigay natin, which is the drug of choice for pneumonia classification, amoxicillin. Again ha, different ang severe pneumonia sa pneumonia classification. Pneumonia classification, drug of choice is amoxicillin. Severe pneumonia is your combination drug. Ampicillin plus gentamicin and your N. Kung wala ampicillin, penicillin and gentamicin. Then, give your rapid inhaled bronchodilator for 5 days. Then, if the child has chest and drawing at siya ay anak ng uh, may exposure sa HIV or positive ng HIV, treat the condition as thick. So, the throat by uh, letting the child uh, uh, drink or mag uh, breastfeed okay, with safe remedy. Then, if the cough and cold continues for more than 14 days, we might consider assessing the child for asthma. Okay, baka hindi naman po siya pneumonia. Baka naman asthma na. Okay? Then, advise mother when to return immediately. Kailan babalik agad kapag may presence ng danger signs and the other signs for your pain classification. Then, kung wala naman pong dumating or bumalik na danger sign, then you have to follow up. Advise the mother to follow up in three days. Advise the mother to follow up in three days. So, in, in giving antibiotic, this is the dosage that we're going to use. 
it is given twice a day for five days, either drops or suspension, depende sa age and weight ng bata. For the drops, only given to infant at 2.5 ml and for suspension, it's 5, 10, 15 ml for 2 to 12, 1 to 3, and 3 to 5 age group respectively. Again, you may use, you have to use first the weight compared to the age in computing the drug uh, calculation, okay, to give you a uh, more accurate result. And for giving the oral drugs, you have to teach the mother on how to do give it. So help the mother determine the child's weight first. Explain the reason why you need to give the antibiotic or the medication. Demonstrate how to measure it using household measurement. For example, uh, 5 ml is equivalent to 1 cucharita <coughs> or teaspoon. 15 ml is equivalent to 1 tablespoon. Ganon po dapat. Turuan natin sila kung paano. At para malaman natin or in evil for us to know if they understand our our teachings, we have to observe them on how to do that. So you let them give the first dose, explain carefully how to give the drug, okay? For more than one drug, collect, count, and package separately. And explain to mother the importance of finishing the medications even if the child is getting better to prevent your uh, antibiotic resistance. <coughs> Sorry. And the last one is check the mother's understanding before leaving the questions out by asking the patient to, um, to uh, by asking the patient questions about on how to give the medications. So now in giving your rapid bronchodilator, guys, we do not give rapid bronchodilator to under five children without any spacer. So basically, a spacer is a way of delivering bronchodilator drugs effectively in the client's lungs. For the first time, you have to prime it by four to five times prior the inhaler and no, no child under five years old should be given an inhaler without a spacer. So a spacer uh, would contain about 100 microgram per puff and give the child two puffs, okay? And repeat the process three times every 15 to 20 minutes interval and classify the conditions afterwards. Then after that, okay, this is what a spacer looks like as you can see. This is just a space between the inhaler and the children's mouth. We also have here a makeshift, okay, a makeshift uh, inhaler which is made up of a plastic bottle, okay. Now, the use of inhaler with spacer, first remove the cup and shake well. Insert mouthpiece on the inhaler through the hole of the bottle or plastic cup. Child put the opening in the mouth and breathe in and out. Carrier, uh, carer presses down inhaler and sprays into the bottle while the child continues to breathe normally. And wait three to four breaths before repeating the procedure. For younger children, place cup over the child's mouth and use a spacer in the same way. Okay, so please uh, take note of this. You can, uh, you can uh, take note of this or pause the video or just screenshot it. And the last classification is the presence <coughs> of cough and colds. This classification is possible if the child does not have any danger sign, stridor, chest and drawing, or even your fast breathing, or no signs under your pink and yellow classification. If this is the case, the management is going to be same with your uh, management under pneumonia. The only difference is that you are not going to give any antibiotics. Okay, same treatment with pneumonia without any antibiotic. Meaning, say, we are not going to give amoxicillin for five days. Twice a day for five days. And the last concept is follow up in five days naman po. Kung wala naman siyang presence ng dangerous things. Other management for this condition is to use the management as prescribed on pneumonia section of the National Referral Guidance as word in World Health Organization Packet Book. In hospital care referral if not possible. Oral amoxicillin for three days could be used in patients with fast breathing but not chest and drawing in low HIV settings. Okay, And if bronchodilator is not available, oral salbutamol may be tried but not recommended for severe or acute wheezes. If that's the case, we need to refer the child immediately to the nearest healthcare facility. And that would be all. Thank you for watching for this video. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, and like with this video. 
Abangan nyo po mga susunod na videos natin about IMCI. I'll be leaving the com sa comment section natin lagi yung mga link, mga previous videos natin. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching. Comment down kung saan ka nanonood. Salamat po. Bye for now.